There's nothing that exists that is going to help to lift and tighten the skin and remove excess skin without actually cutting into the skin until Elicor. So what is Elicor? Elicor is fractionated microcorine. And what that means is there's a stamp and that stamp has a bunch of needles. Those needles aren't like micro needles. They're a little bit bigger of a gauge and they actually are hollow. So when that stamp goes into your skin up to four millimeters, and we know that with micro needling, I mean, we go in maybe half a millimeter just to get into the dermis. This is going in four, up to four millimeters. And it's essentially coring out a bunch of different little tiny sections of skin and taking them away. It's leaving behind a bunch of healthy skin right around those pores so that that can heal back up. Now they did find when they did all their studies and everything and all the testing that they did over and over was that based on the size of those micro cores, they were able to get that removal of the skin up to 8% in the treated area without any scarring. Because it's not heat based, it also might be appropriate for more people. It's not light based. It's purely mechanical. Theoretically, that means that more people at more Fitzpatrick's, more melanated and not, are candidates for Elicor beyond what is, you know, in our typical in-clinic treatments that are available now. Now, if you're new here, my name is Penny. I am a master esthetician. I do hope that you will consider subscribing before you go. So Elicor was in kind of development for over six years, and you can find a lot more information about all of that in their published papers. And of course, I do want to encourage you to check out my blog because there will be so much more information over there, you guys. I mean, I'm going to share tons and tons of pictures before and afters, healing progression. I'm going to share frequently asked questions. Every single question that I could come up with that I've seen asked all over the internet, I tried to either answer myself or I reached out to the company and asked them for help answering any question that I could come up with that you might have. This video is not sponsored. I paid for my own treatments and they had no idea who I was when I got my initial treatment. So just, just to put that out there. So let's talk about the procedure itself, the story here. So over a year ago when I decided to go and have this done, I recruited a friend to have it done with me because I am 49 years old and I knew that, and I was 48 at the time, I knew that I really didn't need this done. I really was doing this just to experience it so that I could bring you back, you know, the full picture. I didn't want to just study the modality and then talk about it. I wanted to experience it and be able to document the entire journey, even though there really wasn't much that I could say that I was trying to address. Now, I did recruit a friend who is a little bit older than me. She is 56. She's postmenopausal, and she does feel like she has a few things that she would like to see, you know, fit fixed, if you will. I hate to use that word. She does have a few things that she would love to see improved. So we thought that together we could bring you more of a comprehensive review of the overall procedure. So Elicor is typically done to the lower face. So it's really trying to address that lower face laxity. Now I had mine done to the lower face and to the neck as did my friend. And we both were, you know, we really wanted to focus on the jawline and my friend especially wanted to focus on her submental where she has a little bit of laxity beginning at that junction between her submental and her neck. So that was her area of concern that she was really hoping to see some results. Now, depending on the area that they're treating, they will go either deeper or they'll go more shallow. And I do think that it's really important that you study this kind of information and you talk to your provider about it. I definitely think that as a newer procedure on the market, it's really, really important that you're your own advocate, that you talk to the, the provider about pre-treatment, that you talk about post-care. And especially if you're traveling to have this done, that you make sure that you are prepared to care for it after because it is definitely a wound. And if you go back to your hotel and you have no aftercare, you will be in trouble. So that is really, really important as well. Now, while the procedure takes less than 30 minutes, let's say to you know, actually have done, you will probably be at the clinic for like two hours, maybe an hour and a half or two hours. You arrive at the clinic, they're going to take some pictures, they're going to numb you. Now you probably get some topical numbing and then they will 
will remove that and then they will inject you with a, you know, an injection of like lidocaine, etc., a, co- a compilation of things that are going to help you to not feel the procedure at all. And you don't. The actual procedure itself is completely painless because of all of that numbing. The numbing itself, that is a little bit spicy because it's a ton of injections, at least the way that I had it done. The procedure itself, while it looks crazy, it's actually painless. You can't feel it at all. It is a tiny bit disconcerting because you feel this pressure and you feel what's going on, but there's no, there's no sensation involved in that, like no pain sensation or anything like that. After the procedure is done, they will basically grease you up with some aquaphor and send you on your way. Now you're going to go back home or you're going to go to your hotel or whatever, and you are essentially going to continue to apply an aquaphor type thing or some kind of an occlusive product to keep the wounds wet for several days and you really, really want to do wet healing so that those wounds all just will heal. You will look crazy. You look very, very swollen after the procedure and you look um, like chewed up. That's the best way that it is definitely the most impactful visual that I've ever had done in anything, any laser treatment I've had done, anything. Okay, so for the next several days, basically you're swollen and you're red and there's lots of the remnants of the pinpoint bleeding and all of those little stamps. Now, for me, I was red and kind of raw for over a week for sure. And I do document over on the blog, the healing progress, because the company says that it's three days of downtime and it is definitely more downtime than that. I don't think anybody should go into it thinking that it's only going to be three days. The other thing that I really wanted to mention is that I ended up with something called post-inflammatory erythema, which is pink skin long after the procedure was healed. And I also ended up with post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation long after the procedure was healed, even though there is no heat. There's a ton of inflammation obviously involved. And I am somebody who is really, really prone to hyperpigmentation. So I would say to you that if you are somebody who is prone to hyperpigmentation and erythema, please talk to your practitioner before you have this done, because there are some things that you can do to pre-treat to help alleviate that so that you don't go through that. I ended up having to do a laser treatment um, probably four months after my second Elicor to help to alleviate some of the hyperpigmentation. Now the erythema eventually uh, resolved itself, but it was still around at like 14 weeks. I still, when I had no makeup on, I could clearly see some area like stamped areas that were still kind of light pink. So it's also something that I think you need to talk to your practitioner about and consider I wouldn't say that this is something that you want to have done if your daughter is getting married, you know, in six weeks or something like that. I think a lot of us would think three day downtime and think six weeks is plenty of time. I absolutely would say that this is one of those procedures where you have to give yourself a lot of healing time just in case you are one of those people like me who took a really long time to heal. Now, my friend actually did not have post-inflammatory erythema or hyperpigmentation after her treatments. She healed up in longer than three days, but once she was completely healed, she saw a little bit of pink around her mouth that was prolonged for maybe, you know, five or six weeks, but then it went away. Her texture is gorgeous. She had no hyperpigmentation and she had no residual pink. So it goes to show you that Two people can be very, very different and you really need to talk to the practitioner about your specific skin concerns and the way that your skin typically behaves so that you can pre and post treat accordingly. Let's look at some before and afters. First, we're going to look at my before and afters. Now, I can tell you that I see absolutely no change in my face. I was really hoping that I would see a little bit of a lip lift because I had heard, you know, not only from the treating practitioners, But as you know, the year went on and people were starting to talk about this treatment more and more, even though I wasn't telling anybody that I had had it done and I was having it done again for content, I heard, heard and thought maybe this will be a great thing for lip lift. I see absolutely no change in my upper lip, the philtrum, the distance between my nose and the top of my upper lip. I did not see any change in that. I also don't see any change in my jawline. Um, I 
I really just don't see much of a change at all. But I want to reiterate that I didn't really go into it thinking that I needed much change and I wasn't expecting much. I really was going into it for the experience so that I could bring you a more comprehensive review of the procedure. I don't think that I am particularly the candidate for this because there's not much to change as far as laxity is concerned. I don't have any pronounced wrinkles, etc. Now let's look at my friend's pictures. Now I will say that both in pictures and in person, I do see a change in the laxity of her lower face. She has a little bit more of a crisp jawline. She sees this as well. And the pesky submental that she really wanted to address after two treatments of Elicor and then the final picture was taken, I think six months after her second treatment, I definitely see an improvement both in pictures and in person in the junction between her submental and her neck. And so for her, that is a huge win. She's 56 years old and it's just kind of this extra little improvement that she says if she wants to consider surgery, she feels like now she can put it off a little bit longer because she feels like that subtle tightening of the jawline and of the submental is an improvement enough to put off having any kind of surgery. Now let's look at a picture from the company from one of their before and afters. And the reason why I want to do this is because this person has a little bit more pronounced wrinkles and she has more of a profound result. The reason why I bring this up is that I think that a couple things. Number one, we have to have reasonable expectations. If you're looking to improve something that is so subtle that most other people aren't going to see that there even needs to be any improvement, you probably are going to be underwhelmed by this treatment. If you actually have some laxity and wrinkles to treat, you probably are a good candidate for this treatment because you will actually see a change. And obviously we can see an improvement in that area where they removed some skin. So I really think that it's important to consider whether or not you are a good candidate for this procedure because it is being touted as something that people in their 40s and 50s can do um, in, in lieu of you know, like getting a facelift if that's something that they were considering. And I would just say to really set your expectations to low if you don't have a ton to change. Maybe you can look at it as a preventative measure, but expectations should be set that if you don't have a lot to change, you probably aren't going to see a lot of change. So my overall impressions are, was I glad that I did it? Yes. I was very, very glad that I got it done because I really was excited about this innovation in the industry, the revolutionary kind of concept of the device. And I wanted to experience it so that I could share with you this really comprehensive review. Now, again, I have to direct you over to the log where I give you so much more detail, so many more before and afters, so much more healing time photos with commentary so that you can see. I really want you to look over there because there are frequently asked questions. If you have a question, leave it down below. And if I did not get it over on the blog, I will add to it. Now, when I asked my friend if she's glad that she did it and what her overall impression was, she's also really, really glad that she did it. And she says that just that improvement in her submental just makes her so happy. The fact that her jawline is just a little bit more crisp makes her so happy. And at 56 years old, postmenopausal, she just thinks that that change is awesome to see. So she's really happy that she did it as well. Now, of course, where does cost figure into all of this? I think that we can't go through all of this without talking about that because it ranges from like $1,500 to $3,000. And because there's only so many providers in the country at this point, there's likely to be some travel that has to happen if you really want to have this done. So that's going to be an added cost, hotel cost, you know, pre and post care costs. All of those things are going to figure into making this quite an expensive procedure each and every time between $1,500 and let's say $3,000, depending on where you live or where you're going to have it done. So the company says, you know, two to three treatments and to get a desired result. So of course you start to add up those dollars and you are getting to that point of surgery costs. So you really have to take into consideration 
you know, what your budget is and what your motivation is, what your expectations are, as well as how much it's going to cost you in the end to see some results. But I did want to just kind of cover that here briefly because I think that it is worthy of discussion that we can talk about down below that it isn't cheap and it is definitely not surgery. And when you add up multiple treatments, you know, you're getting, you're getting into, you know, half the cost of a facelift kind of thing. So you definitely have to weigh that out as well. I hope that you enjoyed this video. This was a year in the making this video and this blog post, and I'm super excited to share all of those photos and documentation and narrative over on that blog. I do hope that you will visit the blog and check it out. And um, let me know down below if you've heard about this treatment, what you think about this treatment. And if you've had this treatment, you know, give us your experience. I would love to hear that because just like my friend and I, we had two totally different experiences as far as healing and um, complications, if you will. I mean, I had hyperpigmentation. She didn't. I had erythema. She didn't. You know, stuff like that. I would love to gather more reviews of people who have actually had it done so that anybody watching this video and reading the comments down below has more of a comprehensive idea of what to expect. And um, I think that'll be really, really helpful in relation to this revolutionary procedure that is now out. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you're having a really wonderful day and I will talk to you in my next skincare video. Take care.